Just in case you missed it, the second livestream event for Home Assistant Cheer of the Voice took place yesterday. In that event, Paulus and Mike run through all of the new features and changes that are specifically voice related and are going to be accompanying the next Home Assistant release. And what's cool about this is if you are interested in getting your hands on any of those features and just maybe having a play around with them over the weekend, then you can actually access all of those features in the beta, which is available now. In the live stream, Paulus and Mike also run through a bunch of demos and they break down a lot of the technical talk into a nice understandable format. So if you are maybe interested in seeing the full stream, you'll find a link to it in the description below. Let's have a quick run through then of all of the new features and changes that were shown off in the Year of the Voice 2 event. Up first, we've got the Voice Assistant Pipeline. This is a brand new integration that provides the foundation configuration for the Assist Voice Assistant. This integration will just be automatically added whenever you add any other integration or a component that needs to make use of the Voice Assistant Pipeline. On a very basic level, the Assist Pipeline allows you to configure all of the components that make up a Voice Assistant. So if you think of all of these things all going into a pipe and then moving from one place to another, then essentially what it's doing on a very basic level is it's allowing you to take information such as input from a user, for example, text-to-speech. This text-to-speech will then move along the pipeline until it gets to a relevant area such as a conversation agent, which will then extract the information needed for a home assistant intent. And then that intent gets executed and that, that execution will cause the next thing to happen, which will be the response. And then your home assistant will respond to you Maybe it's not something you're interested in knowing, but maybe now you've got a slight idea. And if you are interested in knowing more, then Mike definitely does a better job of explaining how it actually works. And again, that's all linked in the description. In addition to the assist pipeline, we now also have a brand new assist configuration screen. And this screen can be located on the main settings page. And from here, you can set up and configure all of your voice assistants. If you're a Home Assistant Cloud subscriber, you'll also be able to set up and manage your Amazon Echo and your Google Assistant, all from this same screen. From the configuration screen, you can easily manage and modify any of your voice assistants, and if you haven't created any, you can also create them here too. Adding a new assistant allows you to set up a friendly name for that assistant, and you can also set the language. In addition to being able to set the language, you can also set the conversation agent, the speech to text, and also text to speech. All of these options are going to configure how your assistant responds and how it sounds and also what kind of commands it will be able to process. Personally, I love this brand new screen and it's one of the features I actually requested in my home assistant requests for this year. What I really like about it is the fact that you can actually see anything that you're exposing to voice assistants, whether that be your home assistant assistant, home assistant assistant. <laughs> Whether it be that assistant, whether it be your Google or your Amazon ones, you can just visualize it all in a very nice place. Another really nice feature that we've got is the brand new debug option, which is visible in the assist dialog window. To view this, if you're in your voice assistant, just select one of your setup assistants. Then in the top right corner of the dialog window, you'll see three dots. And if you select those, you can select debug. From here, you'll be able to debug and diagnose anything that the voice assistant did all within those last 10 responses. I also really like the styling for the new debug window and it would be nice to see this kind of styling filter into some of the other Home Assistant logs. Carrying on then, we've got the Voice Assistant powered by the Home Assistant Cloud. Home Assistant Cloud allows your voice assistant to speak 130 different languages and dialects. This is one of the nicest sounding voice assistants that I've heard. And not only does it sound nice and natural, you can configure it and you can customize it, but it also is extremely fast to run. If you are interested in being able to make use of this voice assistant, then you will need to have a Nabucasa Home Assistant Cloud subscription, which I would highly recommend. Personally, I make use of it, and not only does it allow you to set up and configure other voice assistants like your Amazon Echo and Google Assistant, you also are able to access your Home Assistant remotely, and you can configure and manage all of this with literally just a few clicks. As the name clearly suggests, in order to use this voice assistant, you do need the Home Assistant Cloud, so you do require that cloud connectivity. But this is Home Assistant, so of course they're going to give us a local option too. And that's where Piper and Whisper come in. Piper is a brand new text-to-speech system for high quality and local text-to-speech. It's also been specifically optimised for the Raspberry Pi. It's available as an add-on which you can add straight into your Home Assistant, or if you wanted to, you could run it on another machine. 
Currently, Piper supports 40 voices across 18 different languages. And if you are interested in contributing to the growing list, then you'll find a link in the description below, which will tell you all the information you need to start helping with contributing. And it will also share all the voices so you can start playing around and seeing what those Piper voices sound like. So Piper is going to be handling all of our text to speech and it's going to be doing all of this locally. But what about speech to text? Well, for speech to text, we're going to be making use of another add-on and this add-on is for Whisper. If you aren't familiar with Whisper, it's an open source speech to text model that's fully local and was released last year by the guys over at OpenAI. Since its release, the open source community have been contributing to the project and they've created other projects such as whisper.cpp and faster whisper, both of which allow this advanced model to be run on single board computers such as the Raspberry Pi. With using Whisper, if you do have more powerful hardware available to use, then obviously you're going to get faster responses and more accurate responses, but it is still really cool to see this all available on the Raspberry Pi. So now we're going to be able to make use of things like text-to-speech and speech-to-text, and we can combine those and we can configure and create our own voice assistants. And because it is Home Assistant, you can configure it and you can customize it however you want, ending up with hopefully your ultimate voice assistant. Moving away from those two new add-ons, we've got a brand new protocol that's been created to specifically bind and glue all of these brand new things together to make it easier to actually use voice assistants and to be able to allow other voice assistants to integrate and interact with Home Assistant. This brand new protocol that's been developed by Mike is called Wyoming, named after Mike's home state, Wyoming. Wyoming is a brand new protocol that provides the implementation of a standard set of messages to interact with voice assistants. It aims to create a simple protocol that other models can use to integrate other voice assistants into other platforms or straight into Home Assistant. Essentially, this is going to mean if other models start to make use of the Wyoming protocol and it becomes a big open source thing, then we should start seeing lots of voice assistants and other voice models making use of this thing and just integrating and hopefully playing nicely together. And if you are interested in knowing more about Wyoming, then go and check out Mike's documentation or go speak to Mike here. Uh, he created it. He knows all the stuff. All of that stuff that I've just run through is all of the new voice stuff. But how do we actually start using that stuff? Well, thankfully, ESP Homes just received an update. And with that update, we can actually start building our own voice assistants using ESP Home. So we can install a bit of ESP home code on an ESP and we can attach a microphone and then we can start using that device to actually start talking to our home assistant. In the live stream, home assistant showed off a little demo where they used one of the M5 stack Atom Echoes to issue some voice commands to home assistant and home assistant responded. What's nice about this little M5 stack Atom is the fact that it's got a microphone, a speaker and a button. So you can use the button to press to talk, you can use the speaker to hear any kind of audio response, and you can use the microphone to obviously issue a command. If you're interested in picking one of these up, you can pick them up for around $13, and Home Assistant have also put together a really nice written guide on how to actually set one of these up. And because I've got a few of these, I'll also be showing one of these in a future video. To wrap this all up then, the final thing that was shown off in the live stream was the brand new voiceover IP integration. So you can finally dust off your old landline phones and you can complete your dream of being able to use your phone to call your home assistant and speak to it and tell it to turn your lights on because that's definitely something you've always wanted to do. To start making use of the VoIP integration, you'll need to just have a landline phone and a supported VoIP box. In the live stream, home assistant, we're using the Grandstream HTS01 and you can pick these up from Amazon and other online retailers. Just like with the little M5 stack, Home Assistant have also put together a full written guide on how to actually set this up. And there are links to all of the products and all of the pieces that you'll need over on those written guides. So if you're interested in checking that out, be sure to check out those guides. Because the VoIP integration is still so new, I'm not sure what other VoIP boxes are supported other than the Grand Stream. In theory, if you have an existing VoIP box and it supports the Opus codec, then you should be able to make use of it and you should be able to configure it. I imagine as the community starts playing with this and starts referring ones that do work, then this page will just populate with other devices that are reusable. And there we go, guys. That's been a quick run through of some of the new features and changes that were shown off in the Year of the Voice 2 event. A massive thank you to all of the guys over at Nabucasa and all of the community members that have helped supported and contributed to all of this voice work. 
it's pretty amazing if you think about it that the year of the voice one was only a couple of months ago and look how far this whole project has come since then i really can't wait to see what comes in the year of the voice three let me know in the comments below what your favorite new voice feature was and what kind of project you're going to start building using these new features and while you're down there if you enjoyed the video don't forget to drop me a like and if you hit the subscribe button you'll be alerted to any future video that i do another thank you to these awesome dudes these awesome dudes are my patreons and also my youtube members and if you're interested in helping support my channel which in turn allows me to create content like this then you'll find a link to my patreon my youtube members and all the other places in the description below thank you for watching and i'll catch you in the next one cheers